Uh, Josh, obviously decent day for Australia. How much do you enjoy playing at the Gabba and bowling at the Gabba? And um, how did that sort of pan out for you today? Uh, yeah, I always enjoy bowling here. Um, just that extra bounce, I guess. Um, we were at Sydney SCG last week and it was sort of the exact opposite. So it took a little bit to get into it. But um, obviously the way we fought back in the second session there was, was perfect. So, um, But yeah, it's always good fun bowling up here. Josh, did you feel like as a group you bowled uh, well in the first session it was a matter of maintaining that pressure until you sort of got a crack in the in the wall and, and also did this, the way that you bowled collectively in England and maintain that pressure for long periods so sort of hold you into good stead for that scenario? Yeah, I thought we, we strangled them to a degree in that first session. We probably bowled too short though, I think, on the majority, especially the the first hour, I think. Um, we just sort of got better as the, as the day went on. Um, but yeah, I think Whatever that scoreboard wasn't moving, um, we didn't feel too much pressure. We thought if we could get a couple, we could get you know, three or four in a row, which we, which we did. So um, I think that, that sort of strangle mindset um, was certainly in effect out there, um, especially in that first session. So uh, a little bit to work on, but it was, it was a pretty good comeback, I thought. Just, just about the change of length. Like, is it possible to make that adjustment while you are, like, you know, going through the spell, or do you actually need a lunch break or a break to, like, recalibrate on? Um, oh, ideally, you make it straight away. Um, you know, it is hard sometimes. Uh, all three of us pulled at the SCG last week, which was sort of exact opposite conditions, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, we, we, as I said, we just got better in that in that first session. Um, could have done it earlier, but. Um, I thought we, the scoreboard was going nowhere, so the, the pressure wasn't quite on us as much as it could have been, So probably. yeah. Um, Josh, you got a, a rash shot early out of Baba today, that's, and you've got him out quite a few times now in Test cricket. Do you think that, that sort of shot shows you might be getting into his head a little bit? And um, how important is it to make sure he doesn't get away from you guys this year? This year? Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's huge to, to try and stay on top of him, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. He's, he's probably coming off T20 cricket as well, and we know he's a, he's a stroke stroke maker, so um, he certainly likes to put the pressure back on you as a bowler. And I feel, you know, if you can get him early, you can get a rash shot like that sometimes. But you know, if he, if he drives for four, he's sort of you know he's sort of away as well in, in his in his game. So I uh, can go both ways there, but we're lucky enough to get the nick and um, yeah, hopefully stay on top of him for the series. Uh, Josh, you're a very competent tail end batsman yourself, but uh, how difficult is it for blokes coming in late in the day with Mitchell Stark bowling with a <laughs> new ball you know, at that speed? You've seen it a few times before. Yeah, I certainly enjoy it more from uh, mid on than from the other end. Um, I love playing with Stark and Paddy just for that reason. Uh, but it's certainly hard. Um, you know, that second new ball, if it always equals bowling with the tail at that time of day and at night, it's a little bit darker. Um, he's one of the best at, at hitting the stump, swing it back down the line and um, and bowling a pretty good bouncer as well, uh, both of them. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty intimidating stuff. And, um, you know, they got a few runs there at the end, but uh, I think the openers from our side were, were pretty happy when that clock turned over to 5.20. Josh, there, there always seems to be discussion about who takes the new ball for Australia. Uh, was it discussed between the three of you and Justin and Tim, I guess, going into this summer? And also, uh, do you feel like it's sort of the, the right mix that works for you guys if you guys take in Pat being a first change bowler? Oh, I think any any of the three of us can take it um, at any time, really. Um, you saw Pat and, and Starkey take it, take the second one. Uh, myself and Starkey the first one. So oh, I, I think anyone can do anything, really. Um, Pat's probably, you know, he's such a good first change bowler. He's a good bowler at any time of the day, and that probably works against him in, in that regard. Um, but I think, yeah, any of the any of the three, two of the three can can open for sure. There's no real issue there, and anyone's happy to bowl first change, I think. Josh, um, the uh, referrals were an issue for Australia during the Ashes, um, but you got one right got today one with um, <laughs> Mitchell Stark's caught behind. T Tim Payne, I think, indicated on radio that maybe there was a change in strategy with how you go about that. Is, is that the case? Yeah, I think just keeping it very simple. Um, we're trying to get the bowler and keeper, obviously, and, and height's a big issue here in, in Brisbane with the LB, so we're trying to get someone from point in, and we just have a, a quick chat, keep it quite simple. Why didn't the umpire give it out? And... At least I guess we have a process then and we can sort of judge ourselves if we're getting better or, or worse and you know, change the process or we'll keep it going the same if we're going well. So work today, we, we got one, got one uh, caught behind. So um, yeah, we'll tick that one off. So just trying to limit the amount of voices that are having a say. Yeah, I think so. I think just keeping it as simple as possible between those, well, first of all, uh, whoever's bowling and the keeper and 
Um, if it's an LB, then height, I guess. And uh, if someone hears something or out of the blue, then they can run in and, and yell it out um, if it's very clear. But, yeah, trying to restrict it to those three people. And just the way Mitchell Stark bowled today, um, obviously the middle of the year was disappointing for him, but do you think it can, you know, he, he can become a better bowler because of that experience? Uh, yeah, he probably had another string to his bow, you could say. Um, He's always been fantastic in Australia, and his records his records great. Um, he's great with a new ball when it's and then when it gets old, it can he can do his tricks as well. So um, he's pretty confident here um, at any ground, I think. But yeah, as you mentioned in England, he probably, as I said, added a, a string to his bow there with his control. And if it's not quite happening, you know, laterally through the air, then he can just maintain that pressure as well. And I think we probably saw that in the in the first session as well. You spoke about how intimidating it can be facing Starkey at the end there. How did you did you feel a little bit of sympathy for a 16 year old guy facing a hat trick <laughs> ball like that? Uh, no, not really, not really. Um, yeah, it was quite a welcome to Test cricket, wasn't it? Um, he dug it out, but um, yeah, we saw a few interesting shots there at the end. But um, they can be dangerous periods, those if they get 20 or 30 in a in what may be a low scoring. We don't know, but um, yeah, all runs are valuable for sure.